we've heard about the role of public media and innovation in terms of three C's, let's call them, community life, civic engagement, and culture. So I think when we say journalism matters for democracy, a lot of us can nod our heads at that. And when we say that innovation is key to public media remaining vibrant um, and central to our lives in the future, a lot of us can nod our heads. But what does that look like on the ground? Well, we've got three people here today who are on the front lines of innovation in public media um, and really thinking about those three C's, how public media innovation can affect community life, civic engagement, and arts and culture. And I'm really excited to have them here today. They're gonna give some brief remarks looking at some projects that they've launched recently or that they're working on, and then we're gonna dive into a, a Q&A and discussion. So Jake Shapiro is the founding CEO of Public Radio Exchange, an online marketplace connecting stations, producers, and the public. Jake and PRX have received honors from the MacArthur Foundation, the Night News Challenge, and the Ashoka Foundation. And if you've used an app on your phone that's related to public broadcasting, you've probably used one of their apps. The Association for Independence, Independence in Radio's Executive Director, Sue Sharp, is a respected radio veteran, um, an award-winning producer, and her path has taken her through public, community, commercial, and international media. AIR is a growing 800-member organization that has just launched Local Lore, a producer-led project designed to turbocharge public media's innovation capacity. And as Senior Vice President for Digital Innovation at American Public Media, Joaquin Alvarado leads strategic development of APM's Public Insight Network, as well as developing models for deepening audience engagement, widening digital reach, uh, and increasing their digital revenue. Prior to his time at APM, Alvarado also served as Senior Vice President of Diversity and Innovation for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. So I'm really looking forward to hear from all of them. Jake, do you want to start by kicking us off? It's up to you. You can stay on it. Your mics are off right now, so just get the green light turned on, and I'll pull up your presentation if you want. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to um, Occupy Public Media. We're here. <laughs> We're going to begin. We're not leaving. Uh, <clears throat> so thank you for the introduction. I apologize for my voice, but I think I'll make it through. PRX is really public media's first born digital independent national network. Um, we're hacking into public media to try to open it up. You can go to the next slide. Um, our mission is to harness technology to bring significant stories to millions of people. We do that primarily by working with now thousands of independent producers and local stations, um, first with broadcast as an output, but increasingly as a primary path over multiple digital platforms to reach audiences. Um, the three areas of focus when we think about our, our strategy is really a a, a nonprofit but very entrepreneurial startup minded um, company <clears throat> is in content, distribution, and leadership. And what I'm going to talk about over the next couple of minutes is a few examples of projects that we have underway um, and some ones that really are reaching success. These are not beta or alpha or in the, in the workshop, these are out in the world working. The core platform of PRX is PRX.org, which is an open marketplace. Um, now, if you go to prx.org, you can, as a producer, upload audio. It's an open door. In fact, it's now public radio's biggest open door for distribution. There's now over 2,500 producers and stations, including NPR member stations, but also LPFMs, community stations, uh, podcasters, and a surprising array now of international voices um, starting to use our service for distribution. Um, it reaches millions of people um, through broadcast, um, and it's become the, the place where a huge amount of archival work that was sort of gathering dust or didn't find a way of ancillary reuse after its initial airing has now had an extended shelf life. Um, this is a, a network snapshot we, we put together just of an example of a week's worth of tra transactions. Um, since it is a marketplace, we're noticing a, a huge terrain that had been left um, between what was previously thought of as national distribution and then pure local play, um, where there might be a documentary or a story that makes sense in 10 different regions or five stations that would want to access it, or stations that want to share with each other. Um, and the PRX platform made that possible in ways that we couldn't have anticipated. For a small group operating a website, we now have these the thousands of buying and selling licensing opportunities, some for free, some for pay, um, with an economic incentive built in, both in order to drive adoption, but also because we believe in supporting the independent work um, of producers who are trying to create 
the best stories. An interesting way we've conceptualized the content strategy, I think, is actually quite common now to um, what you think of as long tail digital distribution, where when you have an open platform, um, of course, you don't want it to be completely undifferentiated or just a catalog. Um, so quite quickly, you begin developing the next tier up, which is the curated space. In our case, and I think in many cases when you see out on the open web of, of YouTube or other sites, um, that's a mix of human and algorithm-based ways of curating content. So on the PRX homepage, you'll see featured work, but there are thousands of pieces available on demand um, for searching um, and ways in which we can now track and begin to surface things based on their relevancy. But at the top um, is the signature tier, um, which in the last couple of years for us has been a place where we both exhibit our editorial vision for what we want a new sound, a fresh approach to public radio to sound like, um, as well as a model for trying to develop sustainable shows in an era where funding for new program creation is really at a, at, at a, at a minimum. Um, so in many cases, this is now digital first shows that begin as a podcast, immediately establish an audience, and then add on public radio later, as opposed to vice versa, where you start with a radio show and then offer a podcast. Uh, programs like The Moth that um, actually first started as an event-driven um, enterprise of storytelling and now have a thriving podcast and a radio broadcast that's reaching millions of people um, and really tying into one of public radio's core values around engagement. And then, you know, uh, things like Snap Judgment and State of the Reunion that were born out of an open talent quest, a call for new hosts for public radio that was operated as an online contest. Um, and I think it's interesting to note that um, even sites like YouTube that are sort of known for this sort of mass of user-generated content are about to unveil their signature tier of that same pyramid where they're making a huge investment in signature program channels that they recognize even as a long-tail business. Um, that long tail, while it actually does drive a huge amount of access to stuff that might have been undiscovered before, um, still requires the hits at the top, both editorially to make sense of it all and to drive real value. The next. Um, a lot of this for us is now coming um, to, to, to the fore in a new venture that we call Public Radio Remix. And when the FCC approved the merger of XM and Sirius Satellite Radio in the U.S., um, they required them to give up a channel for non-commercial use. And we negotiated to get that channel for an independent public radio channel that, that is now something that PRX operates where we can use the PRX platform and the best stories and producers and interesting segments that emerge through that and turn it into a national channel that is not only now available on XM, but is available through mobile, through streaming, and increasingly from local stations who are picking it up as an alternative to their news formats. Um, in a way, if you tuned in to Remix, it sort of sounds like a driveway moments on shuffle mode. A lot of short form, a lot of podcasts. Um, you know, there is no channel like this. You know, in public television, you might, or in television, you think of a Sundance or an independent film. But where's the documentary feature show for radio? Remix is that, and we are now beginning to seek out the interactive opportunities where audiences can vote for pieces that should appear on the channel, create playlists on PRX, to start actually being collaborator in the program directing of that channel. So in the summer of 2008, I was fortunate enough to attend a, a CPB retreat in Cupertino, where we visited Apple headquarters on the eve of the launch of the App Store. Um, the iPhone was out, but they had not yet launched the App Store for developers to create apps. Um, and we had a chance to sit down with the head of iTunes and talk about public media and Apple's platforms. I made a, a plea at the time, which has still gone unheard, uh, for um, Apple to encourage donations over their payment system so that we could bring forward a key cornerstone of our business model in public broadcasting, which is voluntary contributions. That is still a major problem with the Apple products and iTunes and iPhone. But I also recognized that mobile was going to be an enormous opportunity and that the way that smartphones were now going to be enabling the kinds of things that we can do for media delivery, for participation, for monetization, for localized content, need, we needed to be in the game. Um, so PRX led a collaboration of NPR, PRI, APM, um, and with funding from CPB created the first public radio player app, um, which is a, a snapshot of that there, launched in 2008 and has had two and a half million downloads and is the aggregation of 500 or so station streams, 1,000 programs, um, and one that we're actually about to invest in a major upgrade to with a lot of what we've learned um, subsequently. And you can just start keying through these. One thing that we realized is that the barriers to entry of creating native applications on these platforms are still high. 
Um, our role could be to help lower the cost of development, to really be pioneering in some of the new techniques around how to develop apps, um, to think through strategically what it would mean to build really smart apps, robust apps on the local level, um, and to try to reversion and customize that um, for new learnings that could be rolled back to the rest of the system. So we began building station apps with BUR, and you'll see just last week we launched WNYC, KQED, um, WGBH, a number of major market stations that are using a common platform with custom features for their local needs, but one in which we can maintain and upgrade over time in a way that we think is much more akin to how open source platforms need to be managed. And one where we can dabble in things like um, local member cards where you can see your member benefits um, on the phone as opposed to having the member guide. Um, we have an app, a, a feature called Assignments where the newsroom at a station can put out an assignment, much like CNN's iReporter that many of you are familiar with, but done at a local level to solicit input, in fact, content from the phone, much like your example, um, for photos and audio and video that you can gather and submit through a device to a local station newsroom. Um, what we started to see, though, when we, we, when we built an app um, for This American Life as a national program app, <clears throat> is that there's an opportunity beyond sort of carrying forward the identity of a station into the mobile environment where they fold in their streams and their programs and sort of, you know, most of what they, they think of as an institution. And is to get instead go for something that takes the unique role and some core capacity around an editorial insight or a particular depth of content um, and tries to do something much more inventive that takes advantage of the device's unique uh, capabilities and, and creates a level of engagement with users that we think is more akin to how loyal they are around listening to their favorite shows. Um, there's something magic about the loyalty listeners have to radio and to audio that we think can be recaptured in the mobile environment in a very meaningful way. So I want to show, a, a, it's, it's less than a minute, um, a preview or actually an overview of, a, of, a, of an app we built with KCRW, which is a really remarkable local music station in LA, known as Real Tastemakers um, in independent music. Um, and this app was intended for the iPad, and it's, it's intended to take what KCRW does and its DJs as the curatorial role, mash it together with what we think the device supports in serendipity and discovery, um, and with work and data that's coming from the web. <coughs> Touch too much too soon. Could cast away with you. Could cast away with you. Flames and fire starting in my heart. Reaching my fever, bitches bringing me out the dark. Go ahead and tell me how to know how they should be. See how I leave with every piece of you. Don't underestimate the things that I will do. There's a fire starting in my heart. Reaching my fever, which is bringing me out the dark. The scars of your love remind It's a free app um, on the iPad. I encourage you to go download it. Um, that was just sort of more of a a brief look. Um, but some of the concepts there are ones that we think are applicable in, in the news and information space, and we're now working to port over in those ways. And in a way, the, the sort of, you know, there's a lot of buzz and interest in services like Spotify that have 10 million tracks. <coughs> 10 million tracks you think you want, but actually don't. Um, this app has 100 tracks you didn't know you want, but do. Um, and there's something to that, and that we think actually is reflective and resonates with a public media role in these new spaces. Um, I'm going to actually wind down because otherwise I'm going to get into a coughing fit. Um, <laughs> but um, I think that part of what we're, we're, we're thinking about is something that, that came to mind. Um, I was watching some of the Web 2.0 stream yesterday. Uh, the, one of the Intel presenters said that their prediction is by 2015 they'll, they'll be adding another billion people connected to the internet. Um, and that 
Another stat that leapt out at me was that in 2010, um, as much data was transferred over the internet as all years prior to 2010. Um, we're entering into a moment where the level of participation, the diversity of who's connected to this world, and the level of complexity that has to be told and managed and connected, um, I think does support what I think is a theme here today, which is a public media role that has to be accelerated into the digital domain um, that is sorely needed. Um, but that actually I think mostly as an industry we are uh, well away from being able to seize um, and we lack certain core competencies, some talent and investment in that kind of uh, terrain. Um, but the points of control in this new web um, where you have you know, really almost just four companies, Apple and Amazon and Facebook and Google um, that are supporting what now are the public spaces of much of this discussion, where is public media going to actually be um, not just playing along and you know having comments on stories we publish on those spaces, but doing something fundamental, innovation that's not just incremental but is game changing and creates a space um, that treats people not as consumers or commercial objects, but as citizens, as is in our mission and our values. So thank you. Sue, do you want me to start with your video, or are you going to introduce it first? And I'll do a little intro. Okay. Thank you, Josh. <coughs> so thank you. I'm very happy to be here again. I am Sue Shart. I'm the executive director of AIR, which is John. He, you sort of stole my little introduction of myself. It's wonderful. Yeah, Craig did that to me, <laughs> so we're, I'll reinforce it. Um, I lead, um, I'm privileged to lead hundreds of uh, tightly networked producers from across the United States, 46 states and 14 countries around the world. We've grown over our 23 years of existence into a very broad uh, uh, group of uh, individual makers who work independently, who work at the networks, who work at stations and beyond. And they really represent, I think, the shift that we're seeing underway. 66% um, of our members in the last year uh, say that they are working to diversify their craft. They still hold uh, audio, um, very at the center, uh, but they're moving across platforms. Very um, uh, intrepid group um, re that my organization represents. Um, on September 15th, we launched the second of two innovation projects aimed at transforming public media from the bottom up. It's a very granular approach that we take. We recognize in our approach two vital assets in public broadcasting. One is this array of 1,200 interconnected radio and television stations that are spread coast to coast, far and wide, reaching the farthest corners of the country. Very strong asset. And the other asset being this group of inventive uh, producers who are experimenting, who are trying and failing, and who are by nature adaptive and really at the front of invention. Our two projects, Localore and the previous uh, project that we had in that, uh, with projects launching in 2009, Maker's Quest 2.0, both uh, the formula was to marry these two vital assets to the benefit of public media and uh, the, the nation. Um, with MQ2, our first initiative, CPB came to, to air and said, how can producers help lead this transformation from public radio to a diversified public media? And that was sort of the shorthand. So that became the assignment. And with that, we, through a competitive process, selected eight producers. We gave them five months and $40,000 each. And I won't go into it all here, um, but they came forward with amazing models that blended digital media platforms and tools with traditional broadcast. So the question became, for Localore, what's the assignment for our producers? It comes at a time of, uh, many people have referenced, uh, Caroline, I think Jake, we were talking about it earlier this afternoon. We're sort of at this moment in time, this crossroads, a paradox exists where on one hand, we do have this amazing network of stations that are locally based, that have a local, uh, that have local, uh, local footprint, 
and have a, they have a strong cultural role in their local communities. But at the same time, the paradox is we have an enormously successful franchise and these stations are 24 seven pumping out the news journalism that is most highly prized and that has uh, led so much to the success of the institution. They have no resources, they have no staff, and they have very little mind space to innovate, to experiment. So we have, at this point in time, a crisis uh, with, no R with very little R&D capacity. So the assignment for our local or producers, and we're in the midst <laughs> of a very exciting time where, where now the gates are open and we're accepting applications, and I'm gonna show a video in a moment of a new invention that we have called a, uh, real, the station runway. Um, but the assignment for our 10 local lore producers that we're going to select for projects that will launch between March and June of 2012 with more than a million dollars in funding from CPB to fuel these 10 producers embedded in local st at local television and radio stations is to build new local capacity. And what we mean by that is our mantra for these stations and these producers is to go outside. We want you, we say to our producers, to go outside, physically outside the building. Go outside to the far corners where public radio has no, people don't know what, even know what it is. Find the stories, find the people, give them access. Go outside traditional use of craft. Again, like MQ2, we want you to blend digital media tools and platforms with the power of the traditional broadcast in that local market. And thirdly, go outside the mindset. Challenge yourselves. See what you're afraid of, particularly the stations, and go towards that, confront it. So again, we are um, launching these projects early next year. And one more word before I show you the, the video. Um, one thing we learned from the MQ2 process also, and a lot of what we've seen go going on around us, is that innovation for innovation's sake has little meaning. It's very hard to justify. Um, it's dif difficult to get our minds around it. We have thousands of experiments going on, uh, which is wonderful. But innovation must have a purpose, and our purpose AIR's purpose and local lore's purpose is to take public media beyond our core audience and to truly create models, 10 models, that will demonstrate for us in a very meaningful and very real way how our enterprise serves all of America. And that, that is uh, what we're gonna see here. Um, the, the beginnings of local lore, basically we invited, we, we invited stations to come up onto our station runway. We said to them, if you're ready for this, if you're ready for this assignment and this uh, transformation that we are focused on, step forward, raise your hand and say, we are poised, we're ready for this. We wanna be an incubator of this project. So we asked them to produce three to five minutes of media, video, slideshow, could be an audio piece, uh, and put it up there and tell us, show us what's inside your building, show us your distinctive culture, show us the personalities. Who would our producer be working with inside your building? Show us what's outside in your streets, show us your neighborhoods, show us what's utterly distinctive, makes you unlike any other station in the United States. And thirdly, have your manager look into the camera and speak his or her vision if you are down with this idea of transform public media, tell us what you're gonna look like in five years or 10 years. And in that way, you put yourself forward and the right producer's gonna watch this runway and they're gonna know where to find you. And what we've seen come forward, and again, this video is gonna show you some of this. Um, in just the, few, the very first week, just the very first few stations that came onto the runway was an astonishing demonstration of the diversity that already exists in public media that we have to build on. So 
without further ado. It has already begun. Bold, innovative public media stations across the country are on the move, signing up for this exciting initiative underway. Ten savvy independent producers with a strong spirit of invention will lead collaborative teams at local radio or television stations for up to 12 months. Their assignment, to go outside the station walls and create compelling new models for local journalism and storytelling to expand the station's capacity for innovation, to capture what is utterly unique about the community in which they are working, and to engage the people in those communities in new and inventive ways. Stations across the country are already applying online by producing media for our station runway. By putting their media on our runway, stations are calling out to producers. They're saying, hey, come incubate here. Here is just a sample of what you'll find on the local or station runway. A world of music and ideas in HD and online at kbcs.fm. The station walks the talk. It is not just excellent. Different cultures, different backgrounds. It is different. KBCS has its own distinctive voice. Very local. It has its own distinctive mission. It is truly community radio when you have the community as part of the programming. Creative. And it serves that mission well. We're not just a television station. Manetsi has a profile of the... Picture. We're a multimedia company, and we have been for years. I'm Anna television, radio, music. interactive, education. WQED, I think, is one of the leaders in this new area that we call transmedia. Everything we do has an integrated, interactive platform, an engagement platform that extends the life of what we do on air. We're active on Twitter. You'll find us on Facebook extending conversations that began on air. You'll find us in a transmedia and mobile media arena where we are extending our content through QR codes out in the community, accessible by your smartphone. I think you're going to find one of the most inspiring work environments here at WQED than you will anywhere else. We've got the people, we've got technology, the facilities, and access to the great stories. This is where you want to be to do your finest work. Dear senior producer, what a treat that you want to come to see us. As you know, KAXE is the most vibrant collection of incubators that go outside, dissolving traditional barriers and eating up the untold stories of loggers, farmers, fishers, hipsters, so hip, the usual suspects, folkies, jokies, the usual, <laughs> totally, human endeavor. KAXE bloomed 35 years ago, and it's been flourishing ever since. It's a good, robust uh, plant in our community. The thing about here is we're the first rural community station in the United States. Northern Minnesota is a special place, and what we want people to learn, and especially Minnesota kids, is to produce programming and web streaming where people hear Minnesota and they hear northern Minnesota. They hear the people, the culture, the place itself, and what's special about it, because it's a combination of all those things that make it happen. At KWSO, we try and keep up with what's going on and try to offer folks useful information while keeping them company and entertained. Warm Springs is cool. It's beautiful. We have cowboys and Indians. It can actually be really cold or really hot. Our dogs use the crosswalks. 
There's success and struggle, good times, sad moments, lots of laughs, good people. Some folks know about traditional ways, others don't. Some are trying to learn. Didn't you want a bum canoe family? <laughs> They're on the water, ready to pull out. We're here right below the Bonneville. The crew's ready to go. Everybody. <laughs> crew says the players go out to the river. Welcome to your call. I'm Rose Aguilar. You're listening to Cross Currents from KALW News. It's the top of the hour, and you're listening to KALW. We're not the same station that we were 20 or 10 or even two years ago, and that is a good thing. We're always trying new things and taking risks in order to stay relevant and do more, and I'm excited to see where we go from here. Stations, producers, join us. Help drive the transformation underway. Thank you very much.